I've got to pick my son up here. So, yeah, quarter to ten, ideally, need to be out of here. So, right. Well, it's only a one hour 34. Now. Yeah, it's one hour 34. We can do so. this. Yeah. Easy. If I can find my remote and my digital copy. So, if you're ready to go. Yeah. And we'll get this party started on a Sunday night. There Some files loading. Welcome, anyone that's here, anyway. We're dealing with scousers and they need to get to whatever jobs <laughs> they have. <laughs> that's a joke because they don't have them. But while the credits roll, there is just something I've got. I did get in contact with uh, Jack Shoulder because he's a great mate of mine. So, uh, he sent an email back with a reply, so I turned it into a little video. So here we go. Hello, everybody, and thanks for watching The Hidden. I had made my second film, Elm Street 2, which was quite successful at the box office, and I was being offered every horror film in town. But I did not want to do another horror film as I didn't want to get typecast as a horror director. After a long search, New Line said they had a script they thought I'd like and gave me The Hidden which at the time was just called Hidden, no, The, which I always thought was a much better title. But that was a battle I lost. I read the script and loved it and said, I've got to make this movie. It had humor, action, originality, and I'd always love cop movies, especially those by the great Sidney Lumet. I felt the one thing it lacked was some heart and wanted to work with the writer, Jim Cuff, but he had wanted to direct it and New Line said no. So he sold them the script and took his real name off it, he since put it back, as he deserves the credit. I did some work on it, my main contribution being the addition of the little girl. I also set the shootout with Claudia Christian from a shoe factory to a mannequin warehouse which seemed more appropriate given the subject of the film, which I felt was, what it means to be human. Anyway, I hope you enjoy it. Yeah, nice. Message from the director. Very nice of him. Did you interview him, so or was it? I thought, did J T have you interviewed him then? JT's interviewed him as well, yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I couldn't remember. I knew JT had, I couldn't remember if both of you had or... So, let's start this thing. So, you've got Chris Mulcahy, Mulcahy, McKay, robbing a bank. While I enjoy a lovely Pinker's Western Coast IPA. Uh. So, we are straight into a bank robbery. Let's see. Who am I ignoring in the chat? Uh, so, uh, Pap was here earlier this evening. Or half an hour ago. Welcome, Pap. Pugwell's here. Welcome, Pugwell. Oh, Matt. Professor's here. He heard, uh, what's it, Claudia, whatever her name is, is getting in a strip joint, so he turned up. So, yeah, there you go. Directed by Jack Shoulder. What's the decision behind this choice, fellas? Well, this one's been a favorite for mine since I saw it in the early 90s on VHS. I don't know. What about you? Um, I watched this probably about when the movie came out. Well, it's got an eighty-seven release date, but I'm guessing it came out in the UK maybe eighty-eight. Yeah, it was, I'm just thinking. Maybe. I think it was ninety. Uh, yeah, eighty October eighty-seven in the US, and yeah. then a lot later. Yeah, I was going to say I probably about eighty-nine. November I watched 80. it. Yeah, yeah. I probably. So I would have rented. I would have rented it in eight. Yeah, I would have rented it in eighty-nine. <laughs> And I think we went into it. it hmm. Didn't have the cinema release, did it? We went straight to video, didn't it, in the UK? Well, it says cinema release, but I, it must have been I very limited. This on a, I don't. This didn't. No. This didn't uh, screen in where I was. Um, <laughs> well, when I got, but I remember getting on v VHS back in probably would have been eighty nine, if I. But um, yeah, I remember just being blown away by uh, the, the quality. I think I thought this was going to be like a sort of very cheap. Straight to VHS, the <laughs> of, you know, the movies, and I, I couldn't believe how good the film was. I yeah. mean, obviously, that's the secret. It, it still holds up, not quite. It doesn't quite hold up to the standards I had when I was a twelve-year-old, but you know, it's it's it is a <laughs> fun movie. But yes, I'm confused. You say a twelve-year-old. This says eighteen on the front. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Although we're realistically, the we'll, we'll be a fifteen now, though. A good point, but some reviews of the time were Fast and Furious, The Daily Mirror, 
Uh, if you thought Freddy Krueger was ugly, wait till you clock the star of the hidden, the sun. Uh, the, hid the hidden is definitely not for those of a squeamish disposition, says today paper. Oh, it's it's remember today. Yeah, I remember that. That was the first colour newspaper in the UK, I think. That was it, yeah. <laughs> so this is how we know this film's not playing. It runs over a disabled old man and kills yeah. him. <laughs> uh, hello, everyone. Okay. Jeff's here. Good evening, Jeff. Bob's here. Good evening, Bob. Is this, is he this, needs the money to pay this, is this LA? Looks like LA, but... It is LA, yes. Mostly I was gonna filmed say, in LA. Looks very sunny. Looks very sunny. So <laughs> yeah. Every time I see an LA film, I was see saying, "Oh, I think, oh yeah, that's in GTA Five. I think, "Well, yep, that place." Yeah. I drive, I drive around. Well, there. I, I watched Raw Deal last the night before last. I know. I love, I love, I love movies set in Chicago because I know it's, I was, it's like, one of my favorite like Xbox games is Watch Dogs, which is set in Chicago, <laughs> and there's always things I recognize from playing the game. Just and I noticed yeah. so many things in that movie. <laughs> so yeah, he's also just driven through men carrying a glass, a pane of glass across the road. So they got a bit treated <laughs> to. Too. Yeah, that's like something out of a cartoon. That you know, carrying <laughs> yeah, a pane of glass. And now we're heading into a, a roadblock that just happens to be on his way in. Yes, Jason goes to hell. Did borrow from this a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> What's the hidden agenda with this film exactly? Is it? Uh, I think it's trans rights. I think <laughs> that's why. Yeah, uh, Mike oh, chose it. Who is it? <laughs> well, there's. Well, to be honest, there wasn't much else on. <laughs> what you got? Two what you offered characters. me? This is the best. What? Well, I said or something else. Yeah, no, but what? What there was wasn't great. <laughs> Well, we know what your level is. Well, a Pokeball obviously thinks I'm a, a, a level above that by getting me to watch, you know, some like slightly more intelligent horror films. But <laughs> it can call well, rabbit. But, so yes, that is Michael. What's that? I can never pronounce his name. Nuri. 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 I went on his filmography to. Do a bit of research, and he hasn't done as much as what I, you know, in terms of movies. I, I thought I've seen him a lot more than what I have. Yeah, because I think there's so films I've seen which I thought he was in, and it wasn't even him. Because I look at his filmography, and it was like, oh, he didn't really do that much in the 80s. I just thought he was one of those fellas who, who was in like, got, yeah, countless was flash dance. Yeah, but I'm guessing there's probably a couple of actors who look a bit like him in the 80s who were in, like, yeah, like, that like, hairstyle movies. Was very popular in the 80s. Because yeah, yeah. originally he was up for the role of uh, Riggs in Lethal Weapon, but he chose to do this right. instead. Yeah. Oh. Don't remind him of that, because... <laughs> well, yeah, I'm not sure how he feels about that, but who knows. I think he made the right pick. Uh, so, yes, this is one of... Oh, one of his all... Of all his films, this is Jack Shoulder's favourite, which I can't blame him. So he did this, and he did this a year after Fred, or a couple of years after Freddy's Revenge. So, yeah, he was his... like he says, he was holding out for a not horror film. Yeah, so he's pretty uh, on a pretty decent streak back in those days. Yeah, because he got offered El Elm Street Three, but he wasn't. He didn't want to carry on with Freddy. Well, that would have been the same year as this, wouldn't it? Because that was uh, eighty-seven. Uh... Dream. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. You don't need to check. You don't need to check. Yeah. I know I'm I, right. I do. <laughs> I love that Freddy cover. <laughs> yeah. And I assume it's not the big version, but yeah, where you see him standing there fully in his jacket. It, 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 it reminds me of the Return of the Living Dead Part B cover it. with like the, the blue background and the. Yeah. yeah, very similar. Hang on. Uh, what do I get to? Pop shots, hot quiz. The hidden or the fallen? Ooh. No, yeah, hidden. One's... Hidden all day. It's too serious. Like fallen, fallen it's, quite, it's quite serious. It's, 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 it's very dark. Yeah, serious. I, 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 quite sad. Yeah, I prefer this. Yeah. But yeah, this is a lot more fun. I'm just waiting for the see where he goes. 
I like to see when he goes, I think it must be pretty soon, he goes to the car lot and he got this big massive black guy who's like hard as nails and he just punches <laughs> him, he just he doesn't even move and he's just like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because we've got Clue Gallagher, who was, what was yeah. he in? Return, Return of the Living Dead, Dead Part 1. Yeah, he died a couple of years, about three or four years ago. He was like nine. Yeah, he was in Freddy's Revenge as well as the dad, isn't he? Hmm. And then, who is it? This guy who's leaning on his desk in. Uh, what's he in? Oh, he's in The Last Boy Scout. He's a policeman in that. So, yeah, Carl McLaughlin, who'd only just done Dune and Blue Velvet. Mm, yeah. And then he. The, the, only, well, Twin Peaks was 90, so, yeah. I don't know what got him the uh, the Twin Peaks job, but I, I can't imagine it was this. <laughs> well, he's placed an FBI agent in both and quite weird ones. I, but I'm trying to think if I saw Twin Peaks first or this first. I think I saw Twin Peaks first, maybe, and then this, depending on the VHS, because we only had a little via, video shop. I've never seen Dune, the, the original 84 one. I, I don't... tried it a few years ago when the other one came out, but I only got halfway through because it, it's a tough watch. <laughs> Not much happens. Yeah. Even though it's rocketing along. So apparently, what's it? Um, Mel Gibson, Harrison Ford, Kurt Russell, Christopher Lambert, Michael Keaton, Richard Dravis, Ron Perlman, Stephen Lang, Michael Bean, Dennis Quaid, Jeff Bridges, Nick Nolte, Gary Busey, Tommy Lee Jones, Richard Gere, Burt Reynolds, Don Johnson, Sylvester Sloan, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and Bruce Willis were considered to play Tom Beck. <laughs> it's ridiculous when they put that in as a trivia. Well, to, to, to for this for this movie, <laughs> yes. But Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> They're just aiming yes, a bit high, aren't they? Some of these, you know, come on. Well, exactly. Careful, I mean, well, it's a Fox Video on release, but originally it's a what is it? New Line Cinema film, so they weren't exactly be able to afford those people back in those days. Well, I think yeah. I mean, so Stallone at the time was. Well, yes, the one was just coming off. Oh, although he's just gone over the top. Hey, nice. Not a Lynch fan. Not really. I like his uh, straight story with a little old man taking a trip on his lawnmower. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of Lynch. I like Twin Peaks, but uh, that's about it. Oh, Fallen from Ross. And so this. That's definitely. Yeah, don't have me don't have me on a watch along for something like um, Lost Highway or Mulholland Drive because I'm just going to look like a fucking idiot. <laughs> I thought you could explain it to me. No. So yes, makeup and special effects done by uh, Robert Kurtzman and Mr. Jaeger. I'm going to remember his first name. I can't remember which part. It's how far it's the film, which where he's he's he's, uh, he's taking over the body. It just reminds me of the guy in Men, Men in Black. You know, he's wandering around and he's got the little thing in his head and it's like he goes ah place. yes so oh here we go so this is a stop motion effect where the thing comes out oh i can't call it a thing and of course they're two fake heads but very realistic looking apparently they couldn't have them on too long because they <laughs> the lights and the cameras and everything melted and There's made a bit it of a, how much of this district manages the thing <laughs> <laughs> none of it Apart from all these little tentacly things, and it's just the just this to see with the uh, chest, you know the, the uh, chest. Yeah, people probably thought, "Oh, <laughs> what's going to happen here?" But yeah, this doctor gets electric shock. <laughs> <laughs> Sends him flying. Oh, we've got more pop shot hot quizzes. Uh, best Carl McLaughlin flick between Showgirls, Dune, and the Flintstones. Oh Jesus. <laughs> Let me just get my signed copy of the Flintstones and choose that. <laughs> and my soon to be signed copy of the hidden. Uh, started, oh, Paris is here. Hello. Started watching Twin Peaks season two and I finished watching the first season. I still love Twin Peaks and still enjoy it. Yeah, one and two are great seasons. The third yeah, season. I've not crazy I've not, seen, I've not seen it but yeah because 
everyone is expecting Kyle McLaughlin to be Agent Cooper from the beginning, but he doesn't turn up to like three episodes before the end. Okay, last one of these for the month. Stop. That's very kind of you, Noss. You don't have what, that, that. what does that mean, by the way? I, he yeah, gives a, someone in the chat a, a membership to my pathetic channel. So what does a membership mean? Uh, not much. <laughs> you get videos early at the moment and other stuff I post about what's coming up. Is it just ba- like is it basically like Patreon? Yeah. Except I think what is it? YouTube take forty percent of it. Oh, okay. But it's easier to use than Patreon. Maybe I'll have to give someone this homemade Friday the thirteenth Jason Lives mouse mat. I'll sign it, of course. Do you remember record shops? Yeah. <laughs> They're still around. Now, people have complained that he's hitting the guy with an obviously hollow tube that, and the sound effects do not match what he's doing. <laughs> Flintstones over Dune. <laughs> oh, upset professor. There's another subscription gone. <laughs> Oh, and oh, see, you're not chosen. Yeah, but I do. Yeah, Dune. I've got it on VHS, but I watched the three-hour version. I was going to watch it again last week, but time didn't allow for it. It's kind of looks just like an alien. It's have fun, isn't it? There's no like sort of a <laughs> yeah, it just likes Ferrari, yeah, yeah, birds, yeah. rock music. So typical yeah. 80s dude. <laughs> it just doesn't look the sort that would do that. So, yeah, we get the usual conflicting characters at the beginning that learn to love each other. Russell's here. Hey, Russ. Fair enough. Different strokes for different folks. <laughs> no, I'm correct. So when was the last time you watched this? Early 2000s, probably. <laughs> it's been a Zero long time. Nothing. <laughs> well, that's why I wanted to rewatch it to remind myself. <laughs> what doing the stream? <laughs> At least you're not watching on a mobile phone. I am. <laughs> to get the full effect. Well, yeah. <laughs> I don't own it, so. <laughs> Does anyone own anything? So, has yeah, he got so like a good? Uh, yeah. Has he got a good Blu-ray release? This or? Yeah, uh, there's a Jack Shoulder commentary on it. I invited him on for a watch party a couple of years ago, and then he said he had nothing new to say about it. As there wasn't in the commentary, so. Uh, Nobody is safe from the hidden. If it sees something it wants, it steals it. If it gets, if something gets in its way, it kills it. If it finds a body, it gets inside it. <laughs> I've still never seen the sequel. I've never, I've not seen the it's sequel. It's free on YouTube. It doesn't include the ten minutes of the ending of this because so it's only an hour and like ten minutes long. And I started watching it earlier, but I just couldn't finish it because it's really weird. It because cont- as we know. Spoilers for this film. Uh, Karl McLaughlin's alien goes into Beck's policeman to save him. Well, well, it doesn't even save him. just stops a lot of questions being answered. And so at the end of this one, a piece of the alien gets picked up by a dog and uh, walked off. And then it takes about 10 years uh, later when the daughter's grown up. She's estranged from her father, and then he's found out they're building a uh, a nightclub where the alien's hiding, and he gets killed off. But he'd already sent a signal out for backup, and the backup turns up as a, another character. And then he and the daughter investigate the aliens. But it's very low budget. 
Yeah, I mean, this lead, I don't know how much this costs to make. Uh, I mean, it looks, it looks, de- you know, it looks like a, it doesn't look any cheaper than a few of the, like, the Arnie films that came out at this time. And- <laughs> well, yes. Uh, what was the budget? I'm correct. <laughs> yes, I literally named my correct, so I'm always right. Um, Five million box office, that's uh, budget. But it made 10 million gross worldwide and then a hell of a lot more on HS and street, uh, not streaming, Sky probably. Hey, Ramon, welcome. I have oh, the hidden in an old snapper case DVD copy. There we go. I'm not sure if it's. I think Arnie would have made. I would have liked to see an Arnie in a movie like this, to be fair. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah, I guess he wasn't. What was he doing? Predator. Predator this year. <laughs> I've done it. I'm going to watch today. <laughs> so, Sexist film. Rather than, watch, like rather than watching this movie, I've been watching another film of an 87. So. Never does his homework. And he wonders why I don't give him the good stuff to watch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, there you go. A dog in the hidden and a cat in fallen. Coincidence. I'll <laughs> just... Yeah, it doesn't make sense, the dog in this one. Because it just... The captain brings it along to crime scenes and just lets it go. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, this one... This alien likes Porsches. Or do you have a Porsche Ferrari? <sighs> or which would you steal? Well, Ferrari. Got that <laughs> it, you see Porsches all the time. It's not often to see a Ferrari. So. <laughs> Kit cars, but these '80s sports cars were almost impossible to drive. Anyway, I've seen videos of like I, my dream car as a kid was a Lamborghini Countach. Oh yes, you know, from like that was always my, run. that was like like the red one. I just yeah. adored that car. But I've seen. I remember watching an old episode of Top Gear where Jeremy Clarkson's trying to drive the thing, and it's got you got the tiniest little window at the back. It's it's a <laughs> yes, fucking it's nightmare to like drive. It. So it looks yeah, amazing. But, I mean, yeah, you're not backing that bloody thing up, are you? No. Could never parallel park it. Well, so, uh, sorry, before I, uh, so does anyone know where the dog in this film also appeared in another New Line film? Uh, Jackie Gleason was going to sue the makers of the Flintstones because of the honeymooners, but the lawyer said, Do you want to be the one to kill the Fl- Flintstones? So he didn't. He could have made some money, I think. Neither. I want a Lambo. Oh, Noth wants a Lambo as well. I don't know. The Magnum Ferrari, was it? The 308 GTS is very nice. High five to Mike. Uh, hello from the USA. Hey, Jim's here. Uh, I love this movie so much. I saw it theatrically and have been championing it ever since. Jack Shoulder's best film. Jack Shoulder would agree with you. Now, Pick, uh, Piswell oh, loves this film as well. Really? I should know that, really. But... <laughs> so, of course, what's the first thing this alien sees on the cinema uh, the TV is a, a senator running for president. What? That's a film I'd like to see. This this alien that's into rock music, chicks, <laughs> and, and uh, Ferraris as president. Sounds like, like Donald Trump. <laughs> it's got gas problems the same way, apparently. Yeah. Don't he wears a nappy. Um... Wasn't there also a cat at the end of Slither? Was it? Now you're talking. Because there was a rat at the end of Species. Oh, there it is. Yes. What's that movie from the 80s with like the, the cat, which is like he kills, it's like a possessed cat or something, and it goes around like it's like on a boat. George George Kennedy's in it. George Kennedy, when he's not on a death ship. Un- the, uh, uninvited. Uninvited. Yeah, yeah, the the big monster. Well, the monster comes out of the cat yeah. to kill people. <laughs> Crazy film. And as Bob's correct. It's the dog that pisses on Freddy's bones to wake him up. Yep, that's the one that wakes up Freddy. Yeah, there you go. Shoulder director part two. Rennie Harlan director part four. What's up, Russell? Yeah, see, no one checks. He just got, he's got just got a badge that says FBI, so no one checks that. <laughs> he's who he says he is. <laughs> mm. 
Well, there we go. Now we're getting information. So what pl what planet have they come from? As a kind of got it is a real planet, apparently. I don't think it says in the trivia, but it does mention a planet quite far away, away. But it doesn't mention it in the trivia. Yeah, and it doesn't see it. But I think the Black Friday at the beginning, there was four of them. Because uh, they want the producer, uh, people tried to persuade them to have Corvettes, but they said, no, the alien likes for high end Ferraris. So they had to trash four real Ferraris. But I think they had one nice one for looking good, and then two damaged ones that they could blow up. No, it doesn't mention where they're from. Uh, yeah, there's it. Un uninvited. Also, Cat and Xenomorph rip off. No. Hollywood don't rip off other people. That's the point. Yeah, Jim is correct. Danny Trejo makes an appearance, has one line, and gets shot. It's one of his first acting roles. Troma's monster in the closet also had a monster inside a monster's mouth. There you go. Yeah, Danny Trey has made about 400, 500 films, I think. He was your go-to. Are either of you watching this on the HMV Premium Collection Blu-ray? Uh, he's watching it from some Russian website. I'm watching it on the... Uh, it's a, I'm watching it on a legal website. Yeah. <laughs> and I have a, a digital copy. And the VHS, which is obviously the best way to see these things. Ah, see, there you go. <laughs> that's why... I forgot to say that. Thank you, Jim. Uh, that's why Michael Norrie never became a big actor. He had the looks, he had the talent, he just wasn't a nice guy on set, allegedly. I remember hearing that somewhere now. Here we go. What is your problem? You understand English? Feel it. Uh-oh. <laughs> you want a broken nose, you got it. It looks like it cuts away the the seam of, you know, with the yeah, it shoots him in the gut once, and then just just enough. <laughs> of course, he's a it's an eighties movie. They're doing coke in a oh, of course, car, you know, yeah. car shop, <laughs> <laughs> just casually doing. <laughs> yeah, just that's it in the boot of a model. Uh, I wonder why Pablo Escobar was a billionaire. It's just like, <laughs> <take care of. laughs> I think half, and half of the United <laughs> States was, was snorting cocaine at the time. <laughs> Even the car dealer's rubbing it in his teeth. <laughs> I want the car. <laughs> hey, Sean. How are you? Yes, unfortunately, Emmett Walsh. M. Emmett Walsh. I thought he died years ago because he always looked old in the 80s. But apparently, no. He was only 80 something. Oh, fuck right, me. Because yeah. he's, he's in a lot simple, isn't he? He's out him. Sorry? That's why he was in Blood Simple. So that was like 80 B, I think. <laughs> exactly. He's one of the um, old. He wasn't old. But yeah. When you look at the movie, uh, like, yeah, like Carl, 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 what, what, yeah, Carl McLachlan looks young in this, and he was young, and it's not like it's it, it's yeah. It's it depends on the actor. I mean, some actors did look old, but not everybody did. <laughs> depends what horse proteins they were downing. Ah, uh, so yeah, apparently there was a lot of story cut out of this film. That's why uh, my version says it's written by what is it? Bob Hunt. Uh, but the new release says it's by Jim Coof because Jim Coof got upset that so much had changed. But then after he watched it again, he realized Jack Shoulder's changes were correct because Jack Shoulder added the young girl, that's the police guy's daughter, and then made it that. Karma Lachlan's character, because yeah. he had a wife and daughter killed by this alien. And there was a, yeah. he cut out a whole bit at the beginning that was supposed to build up to the bank robbery. But he cut that and just said, start at the bank robbery. Yeah. Wikipedia says Bob Hunt's. How reliable that is. But... Ah. Hey. Apparently, not since become a member again. 
yes, Emmett Mount Walsh was a great character actor. Was he in Fletch as well? So many films. Mm. Yeah, there you go. He got a bit of a big ego after Flashdance became such a hit. Yes, but there was nothing to do with him. He didn't realize that, I guess. Oh, here we go. Did we miss it? The um, There was a shot of a Mercedes with a guy talking to a woman that gives him this guy the idea to be a, a stud. And that is um, producer Robert Shea. He normally has a cameo because he's in the gay bar in Freddy's Revenge. He's the ticket conductor in Freddy's Dead and etc. etc. Uh, hey, Sean. No, charger card, Interstate Auto. Yeah, he also cut out a big scene where after he finds, after he, he goes looking for a woman, he goes to the guy's house, which is a mansion, the guy that was going to buy the car, and then spends some time there, then goes to his warehouse where he finds all the guns and stuff. But they should they, they just cut out that bit to get straight to the guns. I wish I someone would make he... commanders. <laughs> I, can't, I can't remember. Does he actually, obviously, with the climax of the film, is if he gets him to the body of like a high profile sort of like uh senator but yeah was he that that was was that by was that by chance or was that was he lead was he leading enough to get more power i can't remember yeah i think he is it, the seed was planted earlier just wants the ability to get stuff done i guess that if he has more power that he can do what he wants and has left people trying to take him down because i don't know if he knows if Karl McLaughlin's on his tail yet. Like he says, he travelled, they both new to the planet. And then Karl McLaughlin has taken over the friend of the FBI agent he's posing as, because there was an accident in the mountains or something, and he needed a nearly dead body, or just dead body to get into, because he can't get into living people like the, other, the slug can. <laughs> That is true, Professor. Someone should make comparison series showing how VHS is better than <laughs> HD. The reason, the reason I know I'm watching this on an illegal website is because above the movie there's an advert saying the sexiest videos posted by single hotties. Oh, quick, put that on. <laughs> I'm sure it's legit. I'll tell you, I'll tell you now it's a legit website. <laughs> Hang on. Punk. Should I put should I put that video on, Gav? <laughs> Why not? What could, what's the worst that could happen? It's good to be here. It's good to have you here. Oh, uh, I'm doing well. So here we go. So yeah, they wanted to get Frank Sinatra song, but they couldn't afford the rights, so they just got generic country and western song on his record player that he smashes up. I am. I'll be back. Oh, he's left me in the lurch. Uh, I might as well just entertain the chat. I'll, I'll answer the chat then. Sean says, I've done some reservations lately and those how much the Cynthia Rothrock movies are on Blu-rays now. Uh, Jim says, I've got to run. I have to make spaghetti and meatballs my family. I hope to make it before it's over. Have a great one. Mate. Uh, Sean says, The Ice Pirates. Any one of you guys got that? I've never even heard of The Ice Pirates. Um, but film buff says, I think I own Ski School and X Rental VHS on X Rental VHS. I remember Ski School. Was it like like sort of like softcore parody movie? A pa was it like a parody of softcore porn movies? Um yeah, I own parts on DVD. Yeah, I, I I do remember Ski School from like I think it was the was it the early 90s? I don't think I ever saw it though. Very unprofessional of Gareth to leave me to the chat like this. I will watch this back to see what I'm... you said about me. I just read the comments, that's all. It said it was very unprofessional to leave me alone with your chat. <laughs> We're going to steal my channel now. Good job I got... It's a good job I've got some streaming experience because I couldn't have just froze there, you know. <laughs> you could have just muted yourself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I don't have the ski schools. That's an unfortunate situation, unfortunately. Uh, he was interested in so better make much. Oh, yeah, this bit's gross with the tentacle comes out of his arm and starts pissing blood. 
but the body's failing. All right, and I'm way behind. Ah, I think that Mike's going to go see. That looks terrible. No, <laughs> well, it looks terrible. And I really wants to go see Ghostbusters, and that's shit, apparently. So, Well, yeah, I've been put off, but I'll just wait. So here was a scene that was added later, because they didn't know. At the end of the film, it's supposed to be a big alien. The slug grows into a big alien, and they blow it away. But then they thought, let's do it small. And that's why they had to add the scene where the guy finds a flamethrower. They took off some kids in the street. And then, obviously, it comes in useful later. <laughs> there you go. Oh, well, Noss, keep your money. Uh, I've done some reservation, uh, some reservations. Really, I noticed how much Cynthia Ross Rock's movie. Yeah, it's nice that she, she's getting some films out on HD because half of them aren't even on DVD. Oh, they go spaghetti and meatballs really? with the family. Take care, Yum. mate. Yes, the Ice Pirates. I don't have that, but it's the same director as Mac and Me, so. Maybe one day I'll get him on. Ah, Dutch has got skews. Ski School on X rental VHS. Is that the one with the guy that the great joke in it where they shrink the house and the tiny little guy so he thinks he's grown over? Right, that's the one. Is Ski School not like but, some sort of softcore, like slightly sexy sex? There's comedy nudity, thing? but it's artistically done and oh. necessary for the story. <laughs> yeah, see, I need to. I, I'm almost getting ice like ice pirates. Have you ever seen ice pirates? No. It's a spoof sci-fi story. But I need to get it on VHS. Tell us about your Blu-ray collection, Mike. Is that what you were on about? When you had Lustrous and Desperate. Yeah. yeah, The Last American Virgin is uh two tones. The first half is sex comedy, the then it takes a turn. Yeah, Action Jackson. Definitely need to see that. That's a good one. Unfortunately, Carl Weathers is no longer with us. Oh, and he thinks the remake of The Crew... Oh, he's heard the remake of The Crew, Crow is going to be cool. I think Mike's... <laughs> well, I don't even like the, the original, so... I'm not a big fan of the original, but... So I'm not getting upset about people, this one. People... I mean, I would say, like, you know, if, if Brandon Lee hadn't died, that film wouldn't have been, like, as regarded as, as highly as what it is. <laughs> it would have just been another... In my opinion, I could be, you know... Call me wrong, but... Yeah. Uh, Ghostbusters is great. <laughs> it says Nos, but it's 50 50 with most people. Well, you're in the minority there, mate. <laughs> Not many people say it's great. People say it's good. That's the uh, or bad, depending on how many likes and views they want. Apparently, so. New Jurassic Mark movies in production. Did Chris Stuckman review yeah. it? Because if he did review it, obviously, he loved it. Um, Ah, my mouse is playing up. There. <laughs> That's a good point. I always miss Ski Patrol and Ski School up. This kid's freaky. Because she, she, she knows there's something wrong with Carl McLaughlin, but... <laughs> well, She's actually, now we're talking about like, sort of like softcore stuff. Michael Nury was in Inner Sanctum 2. Now, I've not, I've not seen Inner Sanctum 2, but I've seen Inner Sanctum 1 with Tanya Roberts, and that's like a... That was a go-to movie when I was a teenager. <laughs> well, maybe next time, because I got Inner Santa 1 on VHS. Oh, you've seen it. It's a great movie. <laughs> I watched a few it of was, them. It was Tanya Roberts, wasn't it? I think so. I think you're correct there, yes. Oh, <laughs> oh, not Blue Ray movies. Blue movies. <laughs> oh. <laughs> They're all digital. Uh, yeah, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. I'm not holding my breath on that one either. Uh, Time Cop is getting re a remake. Good, yeah. That's another ruined one then. <laughs> Michael Mars is here. Good evening, Michael. Would rather a actual crow pecked out my eyes than watch the remake. <laughs> Could be good. Could be good. Uh, I was yeah. So. You could very easily mix up ski patrol, ski, <laughs> ski school, because I've seen both and all, well, and the sequel, but I can't remember what happens in any of them. So here we go. The strip joint's turning up. Where are you? Are you at that dinner? They're having dinner at the moment? Yeah, they're just having dinner. 
Yeah, stupid BHS has gone fast again. Jimmy's here. Good evening, Jimmy. Thanks for popping in. Kyle doesn't get any weird lap dances in this one. No. Are you a fan of Showgirls, Mike? In your youth? No, not really. <laughs> well, no, because it did. Uh, by, by, when, when did Showgirls come up? Was it like early 90s? 95, uh, yeah, 94, 95, I'm going to think. So by that point, I was getting all like the, the proper softcore porn, you know, from the video <laughs> store. So not like this fake softcore shit, which was like just. <laughs> I was like watching your asshole in your escort. What was I watching? Uh, Sins of this. Oh, what was it? Sins of Desire, <laughs> things like that. It was like the girl who was in all. Um, there was an actress who was in a lot of that early nineties softcore stuff. Shannon Tweed, actress. Shannon Weary. She was she, Shannon Tweed, Shannon Weary. There's another one as well. Oh. Yeah. I can't remember her name. Trying to think them. But. Oh, lovely lady. Sure, she was in a movie called. I'm going to have to Google that. I'm sure it was called Sins <laughs> of Desire or something. Oh, is it uh, Tracy Lords? No, no. Wasn't she yeah, the one so who was like, underage? Allegedly. Yeah. Well, she went legit. She's in Blade. All those damn remakes and reboots. The day is near that I will ban every new movie from releasing my living room. It's getting that way, isn't it? No new ideas. Has to be an IP. Then it has to oh, be a franchise. It was Tanya Roberts in Sins of Desire. So, ah, so she was in that as well. Yeah. yeah, she does. Yeah, she did do a lot of topless work allegedly. <laughs> well, it's not allegedly because uh, I can see her bangers out. <laughs> did you see her face and tits at the same time? Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> well, I mean, in, in, in the sanctum, she's getting bent over on the couch, getting done doggy style. So <laughs> vivid memories. But right. you've probably seen that more than this. Right, here we <laughs> Definitely. Go. We'll up now. <laughs> so here we go. Oh, now we get more stripping. So, oh, there's... Uh, oh, I think this has been edited differently to the Blu-ray. Cause, yeah, because we just had... Uh, I wonder why... It's, so the, yeah, unfortunately, gentlemen, that's fake tit she's got under a T-shirt. She lied about having... Well, she lied about having big tits, and then she also lied that she could dance. And then they brought in, um, no, who is it? Who's the who danced with that animated cat in the nineties video? Paula Abdul. Yeah, so Paula Abdul's uh, dance choreographer was brought in to train uh, the. Claudia to dance, but she she wasn't getting it, so she said, "Just go to a dance club, a strip joint, and see how they do it, and copy that." <laughs> there will be some thong action in a minute. This is like the bars you go to, isn't it? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> so yeah, you can see they don't have this in Weatherspoons. <laughs> they do. They're just not supposed to. Well, it's the customers. When <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like Roadhouse. And then, um, was it? Was it uh, I can never remember. Rob uh, McGee, he's in all these films as well. He's in Lethal Weapon 2 and stuff, The Bartender. Thanksgiving. I've not seen that. I keep forgetting to watch it, but then I think, well, it's nearly Thanksgiving again, so I might as well wait. It's, so, it's not bad. So here we go. There's, but So, yeah, he's not interested in her until he sees the money in the crotch. Apparently, so. <laughs> That's what he wants. And she went off to be on Babylon 5. Uh, pretty much every movie is banned from my collection already. Yeah, I think I, if I see them in the video sh uh, charity shop. I still probably wouldn't pick them up for 25p. <laughs> Too many people hate on films before they are actually out. It's a circle jerk of negativity. Most films don't stand a chance. Go watch it at the cinema. And if I get time, I might. Yeah. Sean's a class fan of the classics. Showgirls is quite watchable in a car crash kind of way. Yes, it's not one I enjoyed ever. But it is right as it's fascinating to watch. But the sequel is worse. It was made for like 
fifty thousand dollars and it runs for two and a half hours and it's based on two minor characters from the first film. We can see Shannon Tweed's Michael is saying No, I haven't watched any Van Damme films for a while. I should watch Hard Target again. I like that one. You, have you done a Van Damme month? You must have done, surely. No, I did, well, I've done June Claude Van Damme twice now. So that's enough. Oh. What's the uh, no, still... what's um, April's theme? <laughs> Sports movies. So have you tried to fit a pun in with April? <laughs> yeah, and yeah. other stuff. So, yes, Jim Coof, that's him. Uh, who wrote the hint, did a decent job of stakeout, but a pass on another stakeout, a steaming pile of Rosie O'Donnell shit evening. Yes, I think he did my favourite, probably Disorganised Crime, I think he did. But not many people know that one. You ever heard of it? No. <laughs> I think he did it. Well, that's, I was looking at executive producer. Um... Operation Dumbo Jump. He wrote the Rush Hour, Snow Dogs, uh, Class in the eighties, The Hidden, Disorganized Crime. Yeah, eighty nine after this. So yeah, because she hasn't got real tits, they had to make her have something else flashy. So they gave her this weird dress that shows off <laughs> butt cheeks. Yeah, it's very strange. <laughs> yeah, Shannon, Shannon Tweed or Worry, there you go. That's how far behind I'm. There's no movie called The Villain. Yes, I've never seen it. It's got Kurt Douglas no, as a West. I've not seen that. <laughs> Doggy over the couch. Who says romance is dead? <laughs> 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 I'll just say yeah. it as I say it. <laughs> <laughs> just like the one in Basic Instinct. That's it. Cactus Jack. Thank you. That's the, that's the other name. No new ideas. Every unique movie is trash before mass release, so people avoid it. In the box office, number tell her what. Okay, I guess they want a remake or a reboot. Yeah, they need to make ten small films like they used to, and then instead of one big one, have my Van Damme movies on pretty regular cycle. Well, I watched uh, what did I watch? Conan the Destroyer last night. That was good fun. I am actually going to just going to rewatch that in the next week or two. I haven't seen that movie for a long time. I've been yeah. watching all, all the eighties Arnie films, which I've not watched. Like obviously Terminator and Predators, I watch all the time, but like Raw go. Deal, I hadn't seen for years. I hadn't watched The Running mm. Man for a good fifteen years, and I haven't seen uh -huh. Conan the Destroyer for a long time. Yeah, I know Conan the Barbarian is a better film, but <laughs> Conan the Destroyer is such fun. Uh, here we go. Any fan garlic here? Any fans of the Dust uh, Deathstalker movies? Yeah, I can't keep. How many are there now? I think there's four. Is it? I, I don't know. I've seen, a... two, I've seen one, one and two, two were like mid eighties, weren't they? And, yeah, and... those are the ones I've seen a couple of times, not recently. Th th those VHS covers were the ones when I was a kid. That those VHS covers were those ones I just remember. You know, yeah. what the fuck's that? You know. Yeah, that looks a very good film, Mummy. Can I borrow that? Well, the guy who's in Deathstalker 2 is the cheesy sort of like jock guy in Chopper Mal. <laughs> Remember the guy? Yeah, I need to rewatch the series. I've seen the Beastmaster series. But yeah, the Deathstalker ones had their pictures like this, didn't they? Yeah. Oh, thank God. Well, sorry, I'm woke. I don't want to see things like that. Oh, I'm sorry. Women's naked uh, flesh offending. Uh, oh, no, no. Especially when it's Maria Whitaker's bra. I'm turning over a new leaf for 2024. And I'm going to be all oh, that, you, my woke channel has taken effect and spread its good <laughs> word. But yeah, so this is where she feels like she just shagged the guy to death somehow. I'm not sure how she killed him, but and then she's playing with her breasts like every man would that was transposed into a female body. Do you want to take that one and run with it, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll get implants. That is true. Bob McCall, well spotted. Jim Carrey was shucking on Shannon where his tit and me, myself, and Irene in the in the shop at the when he's having one of his episodes. Isn't Shannon <laughs> isn't Shannon Tweed married to someone famous or was married to someone famous? Uh, Gene Simmons, I think. 
Yeah, yeah, might have been, yeah. Yeah, at least the weapon fire is going to be DOA if they don't make it quick, because no one's getting any younger. Oh, this young lady on the left is was, was director Jack Shoulder's girlfriend at the time. Is that was that before or after? <laughs> like, did, did he like start? They say, Do you want to be in my movie? <laughs> well, you've got to do certain things. Not touching that one. <laughs> it was the 80s and it was New Line. Too many critics on YouTube, not enough people making their own minds up. It's not Bucks Fizz, but yeah, people should just watch things and see what they link. Don't trust people. I, I mean, I, I, I agree, but like when it comes to cinema releases, I've got to like take into account. A certain number of reviews because I'm not going to go and pay like eleven pounds to go and watch a movie. Which is well, yeah, so it's very expensive. I had an ice cream the other day; it was nearly five pounds. Although, it's actually, first when I went to see June two, went to uh, City World, and it was actually half price on a Tuesday, and I was the first I'd never known that before. I no, I, you offered. They used to do that back twenty five years ago. I used to go on yeah. Tuesday. Got, it was like two pounds. The like ticket that. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I looked. I thought, I've been, have, have I been a uh, overcharge, a short change, not <laughs> sure. Yeah, maybe Not... that's why when I went to see it, it was a Sunday evening and it was nine pounds instead of eleven pounds. But then the ice cream was more expensive, so it's like it swings and roundabouts. Well, I just go with a big massive coat with stuff with crisps and sweets and everything. So <laughs> it's a big coat in summer. <laughs> right, here I go. Racial profiling. They're pulling over a woman. Uh, don't hate. Uh, I don't hate films before they're released, but filmmakers should be aware that successful movies were products of their time and place. You can't translate those movies to modern times. That's correct. Absolutely. And then they—that's why they're saying, "Don't hate the crow yet," because the look of it is based on what modern punks look like, not what nineties uh, punks. But that's why it's got tattoos everywhere, damaged goods. Right. Oh, she's showing off a bit. Avert your eyes, Mike. You're sensitive to this thing. <laughs> not if you're not stop clicking that link that's offering Russian yeah. brides or whatever it was. Yeah. See, Michael Myers. Saw I was the same. I saw another stake out of the cinema too. All I can remember is that house blowing up. It's one of the most epic explosions ever on screen. And that goes on for like a minute with different sections of this house just blowing up and people flying everywhere. That's the problem. That's the Chicago way. X, I must check out. Uh, say twenty four. That's Mike's area. I do like a, I, I do like an LA cop car. Oh, that iconic for me. It was like yeah, they are aren't they? the black and white. So it's yeah. text and serve, like Terminator yeah. two. And well, I was thinking, uh, yeah, I just love that, especially in, especially yeah, Terminator and Terminator two. Mm. Yes, I don't think A twenty four Mia Goth. I check out of not watching. She's they got Maxine coming out this year. Yeah, I know like, JT's got uh, having a wank over that now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like the uh, I like accident like the uh, pearl as much, which everyone that seems to be in the mind. Honestly, everyone seems to prefer pearl. But I prefer that. She was so annoying in there. She was, and she's a really unlikable bitch in it as well. And she's meant to be like the, the sort of like hero of the movie. Yeah, she's, she's so unlikable, and then she seems to be unlikable in real life as well. Complete so, swat. Uh, I ain't got no time for her. Maybe one day she'll do something I like. Uh, so, Michael, I'm not giving, not willing to give the crew remake. My Moolah based on the trailer alone looks bloody awful. Yes, if trailers have lost the, as a lost art as well, because you used to have a dog shit film, but it had the most amazing yeah. trailer. But now like, they can't even be bothered. Like. The Acolyte and The Crow and anything, just a string of scenes together that show you the complete film. Well, I've got a quiz I've metrics. got a quiz question for you. Do you know the do you remember the name of the guy who was the most famous voiceover guy in the eighties who had that really deep voice? <laughs> Are you there was famous? a few there was a few imitators, but he was like the the the, the go to yeah, like, it was a time of war. Yeah. Did you give up? No, yes, I do. They're Don La Fontaine. That's him, back in him. <laughs> so, back to my, the film. It was Jack Shoulder's idea to have it, her crash into a mannequin shop to make it a bit more spooky because of these lifeless bodies that could come alive. But yeah, they could only. Fall, they found out that mannequins were very expensive to buy, so they bought two 
then made models of the plastic models of the rest <laughs> using the Mac, the, the original two. I wonder what point they completely changed the way trailers work because there was always a, a way of doing trailers back in the eighties, yeah. maybe early nineties, where you had the voiceover yeah, and then like just, all just the best bits. And they just they just completely got rid of the voiceovers. Hmm. Now it's all slow and depressing, and some cover version of a hit an eighties yeah. pop song that played really slow, and or if it's not there, uh, Billie Eilish. Oh, there you go. Replica. That's a Van Damme movie. I can't remember. It's not one I watch a lot because it is. He's not very Van Damme in it because he's supposed to be a clone of a serial killer, and he's just learning about everything. So it's not one I watch a lot. <laughs> Red Brown Month. I'll do a Red Brown Month when he's not charging five hundred dollars for an interview. Plus, I don't own many of his films. All right. Take care, Sean. Uh, didn't the guy who did this do Renegades? Yes, he did. That was Jack Shoulder as well. Did Keith Sutherland and Lou Diamond Phillips as cops. Uh, I've never seen rogue that cops. Oh, yeah, it's not bad, that one. That got a cinema release because I remember being on the the, the the bus stops when I was a kid. Back in 18, yeah. it was 18 and 19. It was like... The uh, two guys from Young Blood, uh, Young Guns, back again. <laughs> oh, so apparently, yeah. If you notice, when she's shooting, sometimes when she's shooting the gun, she's not blinking, and then other times she's flinching and blinking. It's because after she was not blinking and shooting, uh, one of the screws went off, and a piece of fabric or metal or something hit her in the in, near her eye and scared her. So then that's why she's flinching for the later shots. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you just can't do the 80s now, it just doesn't work. Yeah, because of Mike's woke ways, good times and cocaine are off the table. <laughs> but with all these energy drinks, you think someone will pop something out that's good, exactly. Well, it's like, what is it? It was one night rental, they had someone. Have a look at the script and said you can't say that, you can't say that, and you can't do that. So that's where Hollywood is. So they got two night rental come out this week. Yes, it's uh, just been an empty night rental. You could just run with one with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have like well, you got to have a franchise these days. So there you go. And if you've got the sets already, exactly. There you go. Uh, Replicant is okay, but a bit grim. Yeah. See, Michael and me, uh, twinsies. You get two times the Van Damme. Yeah. So it's. That was it. Double impact. Yeah. Replicant. Uh, what's the other one? Where he plays another version of himself. Time Cop. Replicant was that late 90s? I think I'd given up on Van Damme movies by that point. Ooh, I only watched Time Cop. I, 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 really, I only was. I really only watched the Van Damme movies from late 80s to like mid 90s. And then I don't think I watched anything <laughs> after that, really. Oh, you got to watch Sudden Impact. I know. Uh, Sudden Death and Time Cop are two great ones. I've seen those. No, uh, Seen them, oh, but okay. they're like ninety-four. Oh, yeah. right? I mean, it's like ninety. By, by the time you get like to ninety-eight, ninety-nine, I'd yeah. Like, Six bullets was pretty good. That was well, about ten or something years ago. It's like Tagal movies. that just that short period, like six or seven years, where I loved them, and then after that, it's <laughs> just it just dropped off a cliff for me. You Especially Tagal. Yeah. Well, his ego. Well, both of them had egos that took them down. Everything from Conan through to True Lies was awesome. Junior is not awesome. That was a tough watch oh. for the, <laughs> when I watched it at least last few years, last year when I did February. But everything else is pretty good. See, Doctor Impossible is going to see the new Ghostbusters film, but the effects look terrible. And there's nothing like Richard Edlund's original effects to get the ectoplasm fun thing, yeah. It is supposed to use a lot of practical effects. So they have learned a lesson, but of course, the monsters CGI and all the frozen stuff is CGI. Now <laughs> they've got they're shooting a woman here, but it's a man that goes through the sign and jumps to the floor. 
as a stuntman, I should say. Uh, the present film, Animal Factory, William Defoe, Edward Furlong, and a small from Rocky, Mickey Rourke playing Tranny Jam the Actress. <laughs> <laughs> Different times. <laughs> uh, yeah, Death Stalker 2 had a fabulous blonde actress, forgotten her name, but I bet, I bet you remember what she looks like. Grease, the VD Vanity, oh, Van Damme, <laughs> not the VD Clinic. The Van Damme vanity is off the charts. I think there's four movies where he plays his own twin or double. Oh, there she goes. Oh, there he goes, I should say. So, uh, Ted White is in this film. Uh, as one Jason. of the, uh, yep, yeah, special, special, uh, Secret Service guys. We'll see him later on. I think he gets shot. That's why he used to be you, see, man. you see Ted White without his mask on, and then you think that guy played Jason a few years earlier, and he was, he was old. <laughs> Well, exactly. He was old when he played Jason, wasn't he? So yeah, like fifties. Because it's um, I have been in touch with. Uh, well, I've emailed Dick Warlock because he's been doing stunts. Every time I do one of these films, he seems to be mentioned in the stunts. So we shall see. There's the dog, stupid dog. Dick Warlock, who Michael in Halloween too. Yeah. Yeah, and then he's in Halloween three as one of the robots, and then he's done stunts in loads of eighties and nineties films. Mel and Danny, yeah, might have to be defaked if they don't get fucking move on. Yeah, it's been announced what five years, Lethal Weapon yeah. five, but yeah, Danny's very old and frail. Yeah, what's the point? Just <laughs> imagine I saw in social movie where they had both male and female nudity. Do you think? <laughs> <laughs> the left would complain more about boobs or right about the dick. <laughs> well, there was little left to imagination in those barbarian films. They used to have a furry pants on, didn't they? The barbarian twins. Uh, well, the, my answer to that be, if it's a sort and sorcery movie, like, it's fellas who are going to go and see the film rather than women. So why would you be showing dick? <laughs> that, that, that would be my answer. <laughs> like, it's not gonna get it's not gonna be like Barbie, is it? You're not gonna get like hordes of women going to see a sword and sorcery movie. So But yeah. Hollywood doesn't understand that. Hollywood doesn't understand you don't no, everyone should be able to watch everything, no matter what it's <laughs> which makes no well, sense. If, if, yeah. if you want to lose money, if you want to lose money, then just keep doing what you're doing. Where was it? We watched Untouchables the other day, and that was apparently the yeah, cinema, the... it was like 40% women went to see that because they fancied like Kevin Costner. Kevin Costner. And, and then they all the well. Joe Connery. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, but then well, I can imagine that. Uh, well, like Robin Hood. That would be the perfect. That reason that was a box office success because you, the women are going to go and watch it because they fancy Kevin Costner and they like Robin Hood <laughs> anyway. The men yeah. want to go because they want to be Kevin Costner. They want to be Robin <laughs> Hood. You know. Yeah. That's it. Was it the men want to be him? The women want to be with him. Yeah. But yeah, and it was a good film, and it's entertaining, and it's. Can't it's why you put Henry? Why you put Henry Cavill in movies? <laughs> yeah, well, I'll go and see that. <laughs> you, you put him in the right. You put him in the right movies. You know, I mean, they've put uh, this. They've cast a new James Bond, but hasn't he backed out now? That Aaron Taylor Johnson. It was all rumors, anyway. It was nothing official from uh, the Broccoli's. It was just, oh, he's on the list. Let's have some news day. And he, People there's no keep official on going list from them either. Way. They never. They never it announce it up. until they announce yeah. it. They don't it's put out like rumors. They don't put out guesses. Yeah. It was a slow news yeah. day. People are still saying it's a nice movie too. Yeah. <laughs> had a hot dog in the view cinema. Didn't know it until afterwards. It was seven fucking quid. Yeah. My go-to back in the 90s was uh, early 90s. Hot dog, nachos, and a Coke. And, and the oh. cinema. And I would get change from £10. <laughs> Be lucky to get a hot dog for like you say seven quid for a fucking hot dog they with a stale bun and a warmed up dog. So basically the dog hot dogs you get in jars. That's all they are, you know. It's like yeah, it's exactly yeah, it's not special ones, they're just big hot dogs no. that they keep on the on the rack for the, a week. <laughs> Shockingly not is left and would quite enjoy it. <laughs> I'll hang dong now if people will watch it. What's you gonna join me, Mike? 
<laughs> Hang dong to get the ladies in. Hang dong? What the hell's that? <laughs> get your dick out. Oh. oh. <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. I'm not embarrassed to myself. <laughs> I was going to say, mine's like a, a pink button in a brown coat, but... <laughs> Yeah, see, Sean's surprised you like this one. It was a best of a bad lot, apparently. He didn't no, be asked. Just, what's not to like about the hidden, really? Come on. Exactly. It cracks along. It's only an hour and 37 minutes. The woman in okay. this isn't half past dead. Which woman? Is that. There's only two. <laughs> Is that Claudia Christian? Can you imagine the, hid, the hidden and re- a remake for 2024? It'd feature a strong female character <laughs> that would only transform yeah. into uh, go into other females that were to make them strong yeah. and powerful. A male strip club. Ah, there you go. Yes, it is. Uh, Claudia Christensen is in half past that. Thank you, Mike Myers. So, yes, the strange gun is supposed to be operated with someone with three fingers. That's to show it's alien. Plus, it was painted with silver paint, but whatever they made it out of wouldn't let the silver paint dry. So after someone would hold the gun, they'd have to clean their hands before touching anything else because they had silver paint everywhere. Oh, there you go. I thought... (laughs) Uh, Yeah. (laughs) I knew that was coming up somewhere. But I did enjoy the Roadhouse remake. It It had, what did I say, more digital artists and stunt people in it, which is unfortunate. Because there's a lot of fake stuff going on, but did did you even know Conor McGregor was before you went into the film? No, you didn't know I Conor a, McGregor was. I knew he was a pikey fighter or whatever he is, but yeah, that's about all I knew. <laughs> but he plays a nutter in this. I think it's just they caught him with secret that's him. cameras. That's just him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know how they got him to not hurt people because there is fighting, and you see pinches hit him hitting Jake. Gillen Hall properly, and you I think, think how was that they guy probably just paid him. In, I think they just paid him in cocaine. <laughs> if you see the film, you will think, Yes, that's true. There's this bastard dog again, just jumped on his own and pushed him into the fridge door. <laughs> uh, female nudes, yes, males, I don't think so. <laughs> What's the next watch along with Mike? Is Evil Dead? No, no, no. not a fan, not a fan. I do like the Easel Dead Rise, actually. I thought that was actually okay. Carrying on. And did Ventman quit smoking in the new Ghostbusters movie? Well, technically, none of them smoked in the 89 one, the sequel, because it was a kid's film. But yeah. Yeah, there you go. See, they all quit smoking by even Ghostbusters too. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they had, because it was based on the real Ghostbusters after its popularity. Unusual, the cops get a flesh wound and then just go home. Uh, Robert, uh, Adam had built a nice 65 millimeter high speed reflex camera built for Ghostbusters effects work. The optical work still beats the shit out of the newer Ghostbusters film. That is true. I think he did Fright Night as well. That's true, Myers, yes. Remember the trailer for Predator? It's fucking awesome, yes. (laughs) <laughs> that is true that's how you make a trailer uh, best teaser trailer I saw was for Superman Returns with Brando the voiceover and John Williams score I remember being so hyped for that for me that's another one that's yeah old trailers like that well I just going through this VHS of Police Academy 4 and it's got the Superman Quest for Peace trailer on it so I can have a look at that later yeah they were smoking like chimneys throughout the original yes as you do hey Jamie's here Hi, Jamie. The Hidden Scene. Great choice. See, that was my choice. Uh, the teaser for Beetlejuice 2, I don't mind, because it came with that same thud, thud, thud sound effect they're using. Oh, because they didn't have the same thud, thud, thud. Sorry. They're using every bloody jam. Some black hearts for Jamie. Oh, two remakes that did work were Evil Dead 2013 and Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2003. Yeah, Texas Chainsaw yeah. Massacre 2003, really great. Plenty of claret in that 2013 one, which is probably what Alien Romulus is going to look like. It looked, I like, I'm excited for that after seeing that trailer, to be fair. That was a good trailer. So I hopefully... did like it. 
it just looks like it's going back to the aliens, which I hope. Yeah, it's supposed to be set between alien and aliens, isn't it? But somehow not connected. Is Ridley Scott kind of what's his involvement in it? Is Ridley Scott's involvement? Uh, name on the credits. <laughs> I yeah. think the director spoke to Ridley Scott and James Cameron about it. <laughs> I don't know if they inputted any ideas. Uh, hang on. Dutch. Oh, yeah. Maximalist. There you go. Uh, maybe he's been busy. Yeah, so you haven't seen Junior since it came out, which is fine. Yeah. I uh, I saw it in the cinema and I bought the Re X rental years ago, but then that was the last I saw it for 30 years. That was a reason. Maximum Risk is okay. Yeah, needed Natasha Hendridge to be less clothed in Maximum Risk. End of Days with Schwarzenegger. That's a good one for New Year's Eve. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. I need to do that another day. There we go. The second female character is in the film again. Wife of Policeman or Hooker. I think Claudia Christensen was uh, told about said there was a role available and she said what's the film and then she, it was described to her and she said I'll be the hooker ah uh, the stripper sorry <laughs> I think we've to... can... wait, 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 what, what's your time stamp now because I seem to, to come some way I'm on one one minute nine. Oh, I'm on minute three. 11 hang on let me catch up uh, I'll wait for you no, to I'll catch up for... yeah, I'm, I'm behind you I'll be I'll, I'll be for dying in bed is it is it yeah, it's not because you get VHS, and... is it? How far behind am I? No, not too far. Um, you, you were ahead of me. <laughs> Ted was getting on a bit already in Friday 4. Yes, he was. Bless him. Yeah, the v I have to pause the VHS every so often because it runs fast. Is that where you're at now? I'm at uh, one minute. I've moved to one minute 12. Oh, right. I'm glad to hear you. You said you're on one minute 11, so... <laughs> yeah, I'll do. Yeah, we're close enough. What do you see? Um, he just dropped off. He's just fired the laser. Ah, right. Yep. And the walls exploded. And then there is Lynn Shea, who is sister to Robert Shea, who owns New Line Cinema. So she's in all the films. She's in, what's she, a teacher in Nightmare on Elm Street 1? And I think she plays a nurse in another Elm Street film. To be fair, Canon basically made male Conan, sorry, Canon, but Canon on the brain basically made male Arnie, uh, male nudity. Arnie didn't have much on himself. There's lots of shiny muscles in there. Yeah, he's only got a loincloth at best. Uh, I think Gods of Egypt killed any chance of getting sword and sorcery movie. Well, exactly. You watch an 80s one. They're in a south of the border in a jungle filming. You watch Gods of Egypt. They're just in a green screen room, aren't they? Right, hang on. I'm behind them. Don't make me shoot you again. He says. Picking. <laughs> ah, and there's... Um, what's it? Uh, Richard Branscombe, stuntman who just got shot dressed as a cop. Stay back, Cliff. It's not Masterson. Robert Shea was, was watching... a lucky man to get this group. Sorry? I'm watching the uh, Total Recall last night. Like, um, oh, yeah. I was watching Raw Deal, Danny Ford, but like, the, the, there's a big, like, um, the, the huge guy in Total Recall who plays, like, like um, Killian's, like, bodyguard. He's like a big Scandinavian guy, and he just makes Arnie oh, look tiny. He's just he's like six five, and I think mean, he's one of the one of the henchmen in a uh, raw deal as well. But I thought he's probably been in like yeah, it's Ben Horn, yeah, whatever his he's, name he's, is. Yeah, he's Arnie's like mate or... in every yeah. every eighties yeah. Arnie film he's in. He's a big and huge guy. Yeah, I think he's he's in Predator. He gets shot through. A, he's the one who gets shot through, through the hut when they're raiding the place, and then yeah, he's. The running man, he's the steroids make you deaf. <laughs> Robert Shea was a lucky man to get West Craven and John Walters back in the early days of New Line. Then Shoulder was editing loads of new trailers for New Line. The heavy days of 80 cinema. That's true, yes. I forgot about that. Yeah, Jack Shoulder was an editor as well. 
think he edited the burning. Yeah. I think it's all coming back to me now. Not a sizzle now. Yeah. We still we still need to do our only pulls and horses. Um 80s <laughs> video. See. That's a lot of watching. Well, well, you just do I just don't watch it and just like try and just wing it. <laughs> That's why I do my homework. You see. Well, I've seen it. I've seen those episodes so many times that I don't really think any <laughs> Fine. <laughs> I never wanted to be Kevin Costner. I've always seen too bland for me personally. Of course, I wasn't popular with the ladies, so what do I know? <laughs> popular now, Professor. Oh, what does Jamie think? That's the one lady in the chat. Oh, she's not. Costner's not her type either. There you go. What about Karl McLaughlin, Jamie? Oh, uh, Jamie was Team Rickman in Robin Hood. Yes, he likes the bad boys like Mike. How many times have you been blocked off Twitter? Uh, no, I've not been off for a while. Since uh, Elon took over, I've been fine. <laughs> Since that woke Jack Dorsey fucked off, it's been great. <laughs> Half our sad woman was the one who I think dresses up like a hooker. Okay, yes, that is it. Claudia Christensen. They've got this. Oh. Kamal Lachlan's down. He's got shot in the right in the. <laughs> yeah, I like this. He's been shot in the leg, and uh, the guy passes him a tie to make a tourniquet. And he's, what am I supposed to do with this? Yeah, should have CGI'd a mullet onto him. Yes, it would have made more sense. Yeah, why does a film about a bouncer punching people need CGI? Because of the the epic showdown at the end. Well, plus the fights are all stitched together fights in the bar, so. This one person hits this and then goes flying, and of course the camera follows her and lands, and then it comes back, and the camera's still on them. And one of these stupid one-shot things they keep trying to make look like they did it in one shot. And you can see the cuts. Oh, there you go. Oh, sorry, a bit late, but uh, I said the hot dogs in Sumo's are quite thick and long, and <laughs> cost about six six pounds for non and you know unlimited members, I think. Yeah, bloody, they make a fortune off those things. Ain't got time to bleed. Oh, yeah. Bad boys with Sean Penn. Oh, that Danny Trejo just got shot for being mouthy. Ah, there you go. End of days. One of my favorite holiday staples. Yeah, it's not the new year until Arnie's died on the cross. Must seem like the end of days. The hot dog I had in view was not thick and long. <laughs> it wasn't a video tasty special then. Right. <laughs> What's this? <laughs> Just state your facts. Your facts. Oh, I'll, I'll lose my uh, rat. What does it call it? Wrench. Reputation. <laughs> wrench. Hey, there's a lot of people in this chat who should have a wrench, and you haven't given them a wrench. Like Michael, it's... how has Michael Myers not got a wrench? Well, it's because it's a lot of effort for me to open my phone, find the stream, <laughs> scroll through the names, press three buttons. You can't if you can't do it in Streamyard. All I can do is. Star his comment, and that's it. Doesn't even have three dots to do anything. Like uh, members, I can block. Oh, he's off. Too. Yes, Shay's the, uh, uh, the kingpin lady. Uh, anyone agree with me that Bernard Breslau was one of the greatest British actors? He was great. He was in like stuff like when he wasn't in Carry On films, he was in Krull and stuff like that. Big lad. Yeah. Oh, here we go. It's getting serious now. Slow walk. But yeah, he just missed the great bit where they shoot him in the head when he's got the rocket launcher. So he moves and fires elsewhere. Sven is in pretty much every Arnie movie somewhere. He's in both Conan. There you go. Yeah, I think he had a mask on in Conan the Destroyer, so I didn't recognize him. Yeah, he never did the same character twice. That is true. But there you go. Bresley was good with one iron crawl. Plus the shabby ITC film Hawk the Slayer. Good old Hawk the Slayer. I don't think there's any nudity in that one. Oh, yeah, see, Kyle is definitely Jamie's type. I think Jamie's a Twin Peaks fan, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Jamie's a massive Twin Peaks fan. Has that stream happened yet? I keep seeing it advertised with Firewalk with me with JT, but then I keep seeing it gets postponed. <laughs> is that JT? <laughs> <laughs> just, just oh, yeah, what are you doing? What were you doing Friday night, last Friday? Yeah, I don't, I've already postponed tonight. <laughs> what are you doing? Well. 11 o'clock tonight? I'm not now. 
just cancelled it. <laughs> you did turn up for this at least because I. I've got to get up. At, I've got to get up at half past five in the morning. I can't be doing stayed up till one at one a.m. <laughs> uh, Carl was great in prison movie with Sam Jackson. And nobody seems to call a uh, scene called "Against the Wall." Does not ring a bell. I guess that's an early one, or is it a modern one? I want to be pre president. Yes, Carl. Hey, look, this is Carl before Twin Peaks. Because what did he do after series one and two? Did Showgirls and the Flintstones? Honestly, I really want to like, but it's quite shit. Yeah, I think that's why I've never rewatched it. But I keep meaning to. Oh, that's a great against the wall. Is a great film. That anyway. Honestly, I was surprised that it was what sounds like a pretty blatant F one in a PG. It's 80s PG, though. If it's a fantasy film, it seems to be allowed. Right, here we go. So, Ed Ross, who is in um, Red Heat, 40, another 48 hours, and Dick Tracy, and hundreds of other films. Pokonim. I've never understood the uh, that whole, like, dropping F-bombs. Like, in that, for a 12 certificate movie, you can have one F-bomb. Like well, even if it's a, it's it's not appropriate for the twelve, but it is appropriate. I don't see how <laughs> yeah. saying it makes any sense. more than once I mean, is not going to affect anyone, is it? Oh, there's Ted White. You know what I mean? Where is he? <laughs> My behind or ahead now? I can't tell. Oh yeah, there he is. He's a uh, he's the one running with the senator. I think it was. Oh, it's in the halls now. Right here we go. Rookie oh, cop yeah, gets taken good. down. Yeah, Ted White. He's in the background. Uh, the cheapest buffets are naked breasts. Michael Winner. <laughs> <laughs> yes, unfortunately for Michael Winner, the ladies did not want their breasts revealed. <laughs> there were plenty that would, but he managed to find a few that didn't want it. <laughs> oh, there you go. JT and I are trying to work things out, but keep making us put it off. We will get you eventually, I swear. There you go. Because... The thing, Me and JT the are thing doing the might, at some point. Yeah, the thing putting it off, Jamie, might be JT playing Dark Souls, possibly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's, yeah always... he's got time for that. <laughs> <laughs> at like <laughs> 10 in the morning. What? Yeah, well, here. A lot of squibs in this film, which is great. Not CGI blood. I think Ted White just got shot in the, the arm. And then disappears. Caught the Slayer was the Chips production. They did the Monster Club with... Oh, I was going to say, yeah. I was confused the Monster Club and the Monster Squad. David Carradine and Vincent Price. I think the Monster Squad... Uh, Monster Club has a, a woman do a strip tease. I think it's behind a, a projection, a white screen, and then she takes her skin off to, to reveal she's a skeleton. I think that's the one I'm thinking of. Dead or Alive, yeah. Everyone forgets Carl was in the doors. Yes, he was the best. That was when his best. Was he the... The piano player, Ray, I think it is, but because he's got blonde wig and big glasses, it's hard to see him. <laughs> yeah, Bob McCall doesn't have a wrench. He does have a Walter PPK, so he's done. Oh, Michael Norrie's down. Yeah. Uh, against the Wall had a pretty good cast with Frederick Forrest, Harry Dean Stanton, and Hesh, and Danny Trejo. Yes, there you go. Had to have Danny in it. Would rather see bazooms <laughs> and digital effects any day. Ah, but what about real or fake bazooms? For some reason, I always thought what Michael Nori was in um, To Live and Die in LA. I don't mean William Peterson. I mean, the, I think it was the other cat. Yeah. Know why. If I was going to say he was in something, it would be something like that. It does seem to like, I would say, more serious films, even when they were talking about this film. Oh, see, the senator's a good guy. He puts Lin Shea in the cupboard to protect her, and then he's left alone with Ed Rost. <laughs> JT's playing Dark Souls. I'm playing Hogwarts Legacy. We both have serious addiction issues. Oh, well, we can't talk about Hogwarts Legacy because it's not worth J.K. Rowling is an evil transfer. <laughs> Although she's just shot herself in the foot by coming out and saying more stuff, hasn't she? 
would take a wench over a wrench. There you go. See, so <laughs> the bear wench project. We'll get you a copy of that. Uh, as a teen in seventy one, was he had a kid show on from Hamilton on called Hilarious House of Frankenstein with Vincent Price as a host. No, it's on YouTube. If you want to watch that, Jamie runs. He means, he means, he means Ontario there, Gareth. I'll just to educate. Oh. Uh... Hamilton, oh. Ontario. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yes, I forget. I'm dealing with a worldwide streamer. I hope right. I'm sure bothered. it's Ontario. Yeah. <laughs> and I wonder why my channel is is not growing. <laughs> <laughs> All the hillbillies. There we go. It seems now, Carmel Gachlan must know he's going to die because he tells him they got him. Uh, oh, Ross was pretty convincing, remember? Yeah, he actually was Russian in Red Heat. Yeah, I always thought he was Russian because I didn't see him in anything else. Because he's got such a six o'clock shadow and speaking in a different voice. Hey, the captain's here. Hi, captain. Welcome. Nice to see you. Arr. <laughs> so there's. Lin Shea. Senator, do you still intend to run for president? I don't know why the the alien's more basic <laughs> speech when he's the, just says, I want this, I want that. Yeah, Karma Gotham was in Roswell, which was based on the story yeah. of the alien land. Yeah, I, I like watched that when it, that was a VHS premiere, I think, or something, straight to video. Yeah. But yeah, that was a good one, where he was set up to fail, the, the, the character. Oh, yeah. Gallagher, FBI. Ooh, what's in the bag? Security <laughs> equipment. <laughs> Just not a massive fucking flamethrower. But, so yeah, he manages to, uh, he gets shot a few times. <laughs> So I'm, just laughing, at, I'm just, laughing, just laughing at Michael Myers' comment there. Is Kyle related to Craig McLaughlin? <laughs> I don't think so. Maybe a long I distance. Mean, one's like six foot four with blonde curly hair, and Kyle McLaughlin's like five foot six with like dark hair. <laughs> <laughs> different countries. I'm, 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 I'm taking he's well, joking. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a Craig McLaughlin song to sing, but I can't think of them. Hey Mona, ooh That's it. Mona. <laughs> Somehow he, was, he, he managed to get across. No one's shooting at him. He was in a show called Bugs. Craig McLaughlin came to the UK. He was in a show called Bugs with Jesse Jesse Birdsall. He was in El Dorado. <laughs> Mid nineties. Oh, you should Jesse. know that. Yeah, I remember that. So yeah, now they just surround him with guns and what's this? Look, if I saw a giant slug come out of that, I'd fucking run. <laughs> so yeah, it explodes, but the sequel, the dog picks up a piece and runs off with it. And then it has to grow for 20 years. Ahoy, Captain. Hey, and Matthew Binney's here. There's an Australian. You know, Captain, remember Craig getting his bare ass out in neighbors? Oh, the horror! Yeah. <laughs> sure, it was a lovely ass. But if, uh, Mike's up to it. I've got the uh, Kylie and Jason wedding video upstairs. We could pop that on. <laughs> I think it's actually, I, I, I believe you have as well. It's like, <laughs> I, know, I know you, I know, I know you have. I just... <laughs> I did have Meet the Dingles or whatever it was from Emmerdale, but I can't stand those bastards. Yeah, Bugs rings a bell. It definitely rings a bell for me when he said who was in it. But I probably avoided it like the plague that it was on. It was meant to be all yeah, high-tech, Rob... but it just, that won't age well, because anything that, like, was like high-tech in the mid-90s was yeah. terrible now. Pre-internet. Yeah. So now... This is where it gets a bit weird because, yeah, uh, Michael Norris' character dies. So then Carmel Glockland's 
alien spirit goes into him and lives on as him. Just, But then someone's going to cotton on quite soon that he doesn't know anything about his own life. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Rod from this video, he got a he got a job, and then he couldn't be bothered to do YouTube anymore. So, but he might come back for a special, hopefully. <laughs> I'm sure Kyle and Jason would really put the subs to the roof. <laughs> Me crying at a wedding video. All natural. I'll, I'll be thinking of it, that angry Anderson song now for the rest of the night. <laughs> well, this hospital is, I'm guessing this is the same hospital the other guys were in earlier. Where another patient was found dead on the floor while another one miraculously came back to life. <laughs> but the daughter knows she's not having any of it. Evening, Franz. You're here right, right the last three minutes before <laughs> Mike's already getting his shoes on, ready to go out. But, but I, no, I, I've got both pick with Franz because every time I watch live streams with, um, you know, when you're on, Franz is always there in the chat from the beginning. I'm on tonight and he turns up at the very end. <laughs> <laughs> Take okay. a hint. <laughs> well, I'm surprised we've got another scout with, with Bob's McCall's here. As long as we don't get any other scouts to turn up, we'll be all right. Hey, Rusty. So, yeah. She knows something's wrong. <laughs> Although... She hasn't looked happy through the whole film, so she just looks like she looks like she's she's got the alien in her. Look on those creepy <laughs> Oh, sorry, Franz. Yes, that was his fault. No, no, it was meant to be nine o'clock. <laughs> no, it was meant to be nine. It was supposed and to be nine o'clock because it's a school night. But then there we go. It's finished. Now we can get onto the uh, the hotties adverts on your phone. <laughs> Cl uh, <laughs> Club Gal Galuga. I can never get his name right anyway, even with a sp yep. spell check. Uh, had a, he's a, had a good in, and he only died recently at 93. Yes. He's another one. I guess he looked well, old the other, back in the, the early yeah. 80s. The other guy from the turn to live and dead, he only died a couple of years ago as well. And he was in his 90s. Agent Fowler, Ted White. Uh, yeah, Branscombe Richmond is the other stuntman that always gets killed. Roy the dog was played by Jake the dog. He's oh, definitely dead. A <laughs> shitload of uh, stunt people, which is nice. I hate you, Butler. <laughs> Won't have any problematic 70s shows, thank you. <laughs> I still love on the buses. I watched the three films last year or the year before. <laughs> I still enjoy them. So there was a song playing. I think it's called The, the Hidden. I can't remember who it's made by. Don, oh, the mortician guy was, yeah, Don Kalf. Uh, rabid Weasels. Mannequin Assistance is three people, apparently. You should do a, you should do a, you should do a series like for a month, like based on films set in certain cities, like you could have LA or New York. <laughs> Liverpool. Well, we're a bit limited with that one, but. <laughs> Letter to Brezhnev. <laughs> Western Supermare. 
Yeah, well, that's, that will really be struggling. I mean, has anything ever been <laughs> yeah, from there? No, I'm trying to think. Had a few scenes filmed here, but I think I was Only Fools and Horses, the later series, when it came back in the early 2000s, was filmed here. That's about it. And yes, Oscar nominated Jake the Dog. <laughs> that's a. Watch Holiday in the Buses so much as I can hear that. Yeah, that was my favorite. <laughs> yeah. It was like a Porth Call or somewhere. There's one of the Butlins up in North Wales, I think. Trainer and owner of Jake, Steve Verins. Uh, Stand ins, assistant to Mr. Shoulder. Was, was there something else I saw at the other tiles that was a bit weird? <laughs> But Rob's posted an anonymous message a few weeks back about people going about people not being grateful or something about that. I guess he had a falling out with someone in particular. Oh, there it is. Hidden is performed by by <laughs> it's not, not kind of. <laughs> God, less subs than me, <laughs> bitches. <laughs> Films based in Skegness. <laughs> yeah, there it is. The dog. It was the same one in Nightmare 4, right? Yeah, that pisses on Freddy's bones and somehow brings him back to life. Uh, probably a few in Brighton. Yeah, right there. Quadrophenia. Uh, that's about it I don't think of. I can imagine a film set in Brighton now. That would be super bog. <laughs> <laughs> or Br uh, Bristol. Will there be many straight white males in that film. <laughs> <laughs> that way you have your hand uh, stag do. <laughs> <laughs> but there we go. We're done. 13 when I saw On the Buses and loved it ever since. We live episodes on YouTube. Bob Gr oh, rest in peace, Bob Grant. Yeah. Could do Bradford, <laughs> Rita Sue and Bob too. And, um... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Pick a we'll have to pick one city and get one film from it. I think what's happening in Leeds, there will be depressing uh dramas about people but on uh, unemployment lines or something. They? What's that director that makes all those films? Oh, Mike Lee, as well. That's him, <laughs> yeah, that'd be a fun stream, wouldn't it? <laughs> there you go, Mark. Dirty Weekend. <laughs> See? Dirty Weekend was in Brighton. And it's a, a shot fest, I believe he's trying to say. It's wonderful. Right, so we've got one minute to go. So we're going to thank everyone. Thank Mike. Uh, oh, watch this again this morning. I realized one of the act uh, doctors in this is the guy who accidentally pisses his pants in Robocop. I did not notice that. But there we go. Mike will be live at some time when he can be bothered, and uh, I'm back tomorrow with enjoying some snatch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing more to say to that. Time. <laughs> uh, Alan Bleedsell did some good films. That name's ring a bell. <laughs> Surely a carry on or two went to Brighton. I think we did carry on girls. That was a seaside town. I think it was Brighton or nearby. But yeah, take care, Russell. And we shall see. <laughs> Sounds <airy. laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, it would be. It's a 2000s film. Oh, 99, isn't it? That is a bit hairy. It's 50 50 by then. Bring on the snatch. All right. We'll see you tomorrow, guys. Thanks for everyone for joining us. Thanks for Mike for actually turning up. Um... <laughs> oh, sorry, France. It was Mike's fault. We redid it a few hours early, uh, changed it a few hours earlier. But next time.